Hi everyone, this is Lauren Carson, the Executive Director and Founder of Black Girl Smile Inc. Today we'll be going over a workshop focusing on stress management. Stress is something that we all experience at some point in our lives. Um, in many cases, we experience stress on a daily basis. Um, and learning tools and techniques so that you can manage your stress in healthy and positive ways is key to ensuring that you stay mentally healthy and well. So let's dive into the content. First, a little bit more about Black Girl Smile Inc. Black Girl Smile Inc. was founded in 2012 in New York City. Um, now we, we actually serve young women nationally, um, and we have affiliate locations specifically in the New York area, Atlanta, and DC, Maryland, Virginia. Our mission is to empower the mental health and well-being of young African-American girls. We envision a society that ensures all individuals have access to appropriate and adequate mental health treatment, resources, and support, but specifically young African-American girls. A little bit about the objectives of what we'll be covering today and what we hope you take away from this workshop. First, focusing on recognizing the benefits, but also the drawbacks to stress. Next, understanding the impact that chronic stress and persistent stress can have on your mental health and well-being. And then lastly, we will highlight techniques to reduce your stress symptoms. Let's dive in. What is stress? Um, too often we hear of individuals saying, I am stressed or things at work are stressing me out, my parents are stressing me out, but what really is stress? So stress is a feeling of being overwhelmed or being unable to cope both mentally and experiencing emotional pressure. So what that means is when we have things that come up in our life that are unexpected or even at times expected, these can impact our mental health and well-being and cause us to feel discomfort, distress, overwhelm, and causes us to um, have difficulties coping with our feelings, emotions, and um, implementing positive and healthy coping skills and strategies to ensure that we move through these stressful situations in positive and healthy ways. What are examples of stress or what are some of the things that cause us stress? First, let's look at school and academic pressure. This could be pressure that you put on yourself. This could be pressure that you get from your teachers, your administrators, but also pressure that we get from our parents or our caregivers, our family, um, specifically in the African-American community, um, communities such as the Caribbean American community, um, the African community, there's a lot of pressure that young women experience when it comes to their academics and academic success from their parents and from their community um, and from their extended family and network. We can also experience stress in the workplace or with our career. Again, this can be self-imposed stress, so things that we um, kind of not necessarily bring upon ourselves, but the pressure that we put on ourselves, stress that we put on ourselves to succeed or to do well in workplace and career environments. Also stress that we can get from our peers or um, leadership, our managers at work. And again, also from our network. So that could include our parents, our caregivers, our extended family. Um, we can definitely feel that pressure and it can lead to stress and anxiety. Um, at times, other mental health issues related to the stress around things like workplace or career development. Next is family conflict. Um, this is one that definitely um, impacts the African-American community and specifically African-American women um, quite significantly. In many instances, we are not necessarily taught the best coping skills and the best boundary setting in the household, um, and family conflict is something that can definitely cause stress. I personally am one of four, um, so um, having multiple siblings, um, there is quite a bit of stress in regards to navigating 
um, our relationship and our unit as a family, but also individual relationships as well. Next is going to be health issues. Um, this could be mental health issues. This could also be physical health issues. If we have various physical ailments, things that um, are long lasting like diabetes or heart disease, these are things that can definitely cause stress. And when, specifically when we're talking about physical health issues, stress can definitely impact your, your, your physical health. Uh, for instance, if you have diabetes, if you are under stress, if you're in stressful environments, you may see your blood sugar shoot up. Um, so these, so stress doesn't just affect us kind of, you know, in theory um, and, and create pressure, but it also can impact um, our body and our physical health as well. Next is going to be economic insecurity. So if there are issues um, with basic needs, um, having a, a stable house, a stable roof over your head, being able to provide, being able to ensure that you are, that you are safe, things that come with economic insecurity can definitely cause stress um, on individuals, but it can also cause stress on units as well, so family units. Financial stress is another huge stressor, um, especially as you get older and you start to take on more financial responsibility, ensuring that you're able to take care of your bills on a consistent basis. Um, these are things that can at times cause stress and anxiety in individuals. Next is going to be racial trauma. This is something as well that is um, unique to uh, marginalized communities. We're getting away from the, the term minority, um, but communities that experience discrimination or racism, racial trauma can definitely impact your mental health and well being and cause you stress and anxiety. Flip side of that as well, that's kind of like a, a double edged sword for, for young women is gender trauma as well, in ways that we are discriminated against as females, as women, um, whether it's at, in, at home, in the workplace, or at school. These are things that can definitely impact your mental health and cause you stress, pressure, and anxiety. Um, the last one here is going to be violence or conflict. Um, any sort of conflict, anything that kind of threatens your integrity of safety, of life, these are all things that can definitely create stress and pressure and impact your mental health and well-being. I encourage you to take a second and stop and think about what are some of the ways that stress is, are, is present in your life. Um, is that present through school? Is it present through family? But take a second to list off some of the ways that stress impacts your life and ways that stress shows up in your life. Feel free to use this list as a starting point, but definitely add anything that is additionally relevant. It's really important to give voice to, to document, to start to recognize ways that stress is potentially impacting our mental health and well-being. We'll give you a few minutes to complete that exercise. Next, we have a quick true or false question. True or false, is stress always bad? Hopefully you said false. In many instances, we think of stress as very negative, um, something that um, we want to stay away from at, at all costs. Um, but stress is not always a bad thing. Stress can, um, there is positive stress, and we'll be talking about that in a few slides from now. Um, but stress also makes you resilient. It teaches you strong coping skills. It helps us recognize that we are human. Stress is something that we all experience. So stress is not always bad. If anything, it is a part of the human experience. Um, and, and we find ways to cope, to be resilient, and to move through stress so that we can call upon our coping skills and our self-care methods um, going forward. So we're gonna look at a few different types of stress. As I mentioned, stress is not always bad. Um, so we have four different types of stress here. Um, we have chronic um, versus acute. Acute is going to be short term. That's normally a specific event, something has occurred, um, a temporary circumstance that is causing stress. The flip side of that is chronic, stress that is consistent, that is 
long-term, that is persisting over a significant period of time. Um, and again, kind of calling back to the previous slides that we looked at, there's various types of stress, various types of situations that can cause us stress. We want to look at is the stress that we are experiencing or the places that we're experiencing stress, are these acute situations or are these more chronic situations? Are they persistent and more long-term? Then we look at this in a few different quadrants. Um, first being euro stress. Um, this is going to be positive stress, good stress. Um, this may be, for instance, for me, um, I have an 18 month old at home. While it's quite stressful uh, raising a little boy, um, this is good stress. This is something that um, I see as a positive in my life and, and helps me as an individual, but also helps me be a good mom. Um, the flip side of that is going to be distress. Um, let's look at something like the pandemic. While the pandemic has been persistent and quite long term, at some point it's going to end. Um, so we can consider that potentially in between acute and chronic because it's a situation that we do see ending at some point. Um, so again, looking at chronic versus acute and then looking at euro stress um, and then looking at distress are kind of the ways to break down good stress versus bad stress and short term versus long. Next, let's look at some of the positives of stress. Um, as I mentioned, stress is not always negative. Um, so again, this normalizes your human experience. It allows us to connect with others. In many ways, we, we can work with others to find out how do they handle various um, difficulties or very stressful situations, or maybe we can call on some of those coping skills and self-care methods as well. It makes us resilient, as mentioned before, we learn new coping skills, we can lean into our self-care practices, but it also increases self-awareness. It makes us aware of various things that impact us, that impact our health and well-being, impact us mentally, and taking note of those things can create an increased sense of self-awareness. So how does stress impact you? Um, I mentioned briefly earlier that it doesn't just affect you fictitiously, but it also impacts you um, both socio-emotional, so, so, socio, um, so your mood, also impacts your behaviors, but also your body. Ways in which we may see this impact, for instance, body or physicality, physical, are things like headaches, um, muscle tension, changes in sleep, so sleeping too much or not sleeping enough. Um, exhaustion or fatigue, also changes in your sexual drive, and then also digestion issues as well. I also want to add there eating habits as well and your nutrition. You may find that you're eating a little bit more or you're eating not enough. These are ways that stress can impact your, your, health, and your health and your physical well-being. Ways that this impacts your mood, um, that could lead to, a, a stress could lead to anxiety, anger or frustration, also leads to depression at times. Um, depending upon your other symptoms, it can also lead to paranoia, jealousy, and even restlessness. On the behavior side, so when we have the mood, this is, this is our, our feelings and our thoughts and, and kind of how we're, how we're projecting that onto the world. And then moving a little bit further for behaviors, this is going to be how we're interacting with our environment and others. You may see things like anger outbursts or extreme irritation, eating too much, not eating enough, um, looking towards or leaning into um, substances such as alcohol, um, illicit drugs, marijuana, smoking more, even um, withdrawing socially. These are all ways that stress can impact your mental health and well-being. And I highly encourage you, if you are seeing any of these symptoms for a significant period of time, and what the DSM, um, and that is the uh, Diagnostic Statistical Manual that's used by the mental health and behavioral health community to diagnose and treat individuals that are struggling with mental health issues. Um, they classify um, a significant period of time as more than two weeks. So if you're experiencing any of these symptoms for more than two weeks, highly encourage you to reach out to a trusted adult, someone within your network, um, start to 
schedule appointments with your primary care physician, and potentially look at scheduling an appointment with a licensed mental health professional. So chronic stress. Again, this is going to be for a significant period of time, this is persistent. Um, in many cases, a lot of us, especially as uh, girls of color, women of color, we experience chronic stress in various areas, whether that's with family, whether it's with our job, racial trauma, but in, in many cases, especially women of color, um, girls of color, we are more susceptible to experiencing chronic stress impact. So we see things as similar to the last slide, um, chronic health issues that can lead to things such as heart disease, diabetes, migraines, attention issues, also that attention to detail, especially in a school environment or a work environment, attention to detail is quite, um, is, a, is a big thing that a lot of management and leadership pushes and you may see issues related to stress in your attention to detail. Also could lead to things like chronic depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts and actions. If you experience any suicidal thoughts or actions, um, you need to reach out to a, a, a trusted adult, a licensed mental health professional immediately. A few other resources that I would like to kind of interject that I think are really important are resources such as the Crisis Text Line. Um, Black Girl Smile actually has a partnership with the Crisis Text Line. So if you text SMILE to 741741, you receive a Crisis Text Counselor 24-7, 365, that can help you through a plethora of issues that you may be experiencing with your mental health. There's also the National Suicide Hotline. I believe the number is 1-800-273-8255. Would definitely check that, but the National Suicide Hotline is another number that I highly encourage if you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, feelings of hopelessness, feelings like you may hurt yourself or others, reach out to these crisis resources. And if you are in immediate danger of hurting yourself or others, reach out to 911. We also may see things such as compromised immune system, so having digestion issues, um, or sorry, um, digestion issues is another issue, but with your immune system, that may mean you're not able to fight off um, a cold or the flu as easily as before. Stress can definitely um, lower your immune system and cause issues with kind of bouncing back from health issues. Next is difficulty maintaining positive and healthy relationships. If you are lashing out, if you're having difficulty in your relationships, chronic stress may be a potential cause of that. Also impacts our self-esteem, our self-worth, how we feel about ourselves, how we interact with ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, that inner dialogue that we have. Um, you may see negative self-talk when it comes to things like chronic stress. Also additional health issues that you may experience that could be things like skin issues, hair loss, chronic fatigue, and again, diminished performance in school, but also in the work environment as well. So all of these things are additional things to look out for if you find that stress is impacting your life in various ways. And again, want to just stress, I highly suggest reaching out to a trusted adult in regards to some of the symptoms that you may be experiencing, someone who you feel comfortable opening up to, who can listen non-judgmentally. Um, then reaching out to your either primary care physician or a licensed mental health professional. Next question that we're going to go through today, and we encourage you to take a few minutes to ponder, to meditate on this. How can we manage and minimize stress? What are some ways that stress, again, going back to our previous list, what are some ways that we are experiencing stress or we're encountering stress? And how do you feel like you can manage the stress that you're experiencing? We're going to give you a few minutes to write out a few suggestions, and then we'll go through um, some additional suggestions that we have as an organization. 